In this video, I want to have a look at proofs involving binomial expansions. So there's a couple of different ways you can approach these questions, depending on what we're trying to prove. And we're going to have a look at a couple of different ones today. So our first example asks us to prove that the sum of the coefficients in a plus b to the power of n is equal to 2 to the power of n. So we know what this expansion is. If we have a plus b to the power of n, we know that we can expand that to n c 0 a to the power of n plus n c 1 a to the power of n minus 1 b plus n c 2 a to the power of n minus 2 b squared and so on. So we can continue that on until we get to n c n b to the power of n. Now, one of the methods that you can use to solve these is to choose values for a and b. So because we're trying to get to 2 to the power of n, I'm going to, going to let a equal 1 and b equal 1. So that means that this left-hand side of the equation is going to be 1 plus 1 to the power of n, so 2 to the power of n. And then we can simplify this right-hand side as well. So we're still going to have these coefficients of n, c, 0. But if a is 1, then we've just got 1 to the power of n, which is just 1. For our next term, we're going to have our n, c, 1. And then this a and b are both 1. So this term just simplifies to n, c, 1. The third term here will just simplify to n, c, 2. And that'll continue all the way until the end. So what we've got on this right-hand side is just the coefficients. So this is the sum of the coefficients. And we've shown that it's equal to 2 to the power of n. Our second example asks us to show that if 1 plus x to the power of n is equal to this summation here, then we want to show that this statement here is true. So to do this, we're going to use a similar method to the one that we just used. We know that we want to end up with a 4 to the power of n here. And over here on this left-hand side, we have a 1 plus x to the power of n. So to make that into a 4n, we're going to let x equal 3. So if we take this one, that does give us our 4 to the power of n on the left-hand side of that equation. And then we need to have a look at this one and what's going to happen over here. And so if we rewrite that out, but let our x equal 3, so we're going to have r equals 0 to n of n to the r 3 to the power of r. Now if we rewrite that and rearrange that to bring that 3 to the r in front of this combination instead, then we've got this term here. So we can write it as the sum from r equal to 0 to n of 3 to the power of r n r. So that's our proof for that one. Our third example says that if 1 plus x to the power of n is equal to this expression here, we want to show that the sum from r equals 1 to n of r n c r is equal to n times 2 to the power of n minus 1. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start with this expression here, 1 plus x to the power of n, and we know that that's equal to this, but I'm going to write it out in the longer form instead. So we're going to write it as n c 0 plus n c 1 x plus n c 2 x squared plus n c 3 x cubed, and so on, all the way until we get to n c n x to the power of n. Now, when we have a look at this, we can't just do what we were doing in those first examples, because if we put a 1 in there to make our 2 as our base, like we have over here, it's going to have a power of n, not a power of n minus 1. So what we're going to do first is we're going to differentiate both sides of this expression. So if we differentiate the left-hand side there, using the chain rule, we're going to have n multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of n minus 1. And then if we multiply, sorry, not multiply, if we differentiate the right-hand side, this nc0, we know that that's just equal to 1. So that's a constant, so it just um, derives to 0. This one here, if we've just got an x, then when we differentiate it, we're just going to have its coefficient. So we're going to have nc1. Plus, when we differentiate this, we're going to have 2 nc2 of x. So we're bringing that power out the front. Then we'd have 3 nc3 of x squared. And we'd have that all the way up to this last term where we'd end up with n, n c n, x to the power of n minus 1. So now that we've differentiated that, we've got the n out the front, we've got that here, and we've got the power of n minus 1 like we have up here. So now we're going to do what we did in the first examples, and we're going to let x equal 1. So that means that this left-hand side is going to become n 2 to the n minus 1. And in here, we're going to end up with n c 1 
plus, well that x is just one, so we have 2 nc2 plus 3 n, oh, hang on, that 3 shouldn't be little, 3 nc3 plus, if we did another one, we'd have, hang on, I keep writing it wrong, we'd have 4 nc4, and we'd have that all the way up until we ended up at n ncn. So what you see is that the coefficient is always the same as this term down the bottom. So if we want to put that back in summation form, we can write it as k equals, well hang on, they used an r, so let's use r as well to match theirs. So we'd have r equals 1 to n, and the reason it's a 1 not a 0 like it was over here is because our first number here is a 1 as well. And then we're going to have r multiplied by ncr. So that's giving us our 2 nc2, our 3 nc3, and so on. So that's our proof. It involved differentiating and then substituting in a value. There are examples as well where you might have to integrate questions instead of differentiating. So if the power is reduced by 1, we're going to differentiate. If the power was an n plus 1, we'd be integrating instead in our proof. So that's having a look at proofs that involve binomial expansions.